Today I've got a new 3D printer, but it is completely different than all of my 3D printers. Let me explain. This is CR10, that's CR10S, that's GG Aurora 605S. They are pretty similar, expect that those two use both an extruder, this one use direct extruder, build volume, it's a little bit different in each printer, but the difference between them and the new one is number of extruders. Printers that I already had have single extruders, and this one have two extruders. And that means that you can print with two colors at once, and that leads to some really awesome prints. That's my first dual color print, and actually third print on this printer. I didn't manage to get a slicer working with this printer, that's the G-code that I found on the SD card. There are few things that can be adjusted. For me this two color 3D print looks just awesome. You can also clearly see the difference between filaments. Green one is a really good filament and the blue one is just the cheapest filament you can possibly buy. As you can see this printer comes in a really small box and that means that this is a DIY kit. So you have to assemble the wool printer yourself, which can take some time, but I actually as a maker really like making things. So that's good for me. Fortunately, producer provided a really good instruction on how to assemble this printer, so it will be easy, I hope. Okay, so before we start assembling, let's take a look at what you can find in this kit. The box is well protected, so there is no way that anything will happen to the printer while shipping. And here you have everything. Some 3D printed elements, tools, that's cool, tape, screws and rods. You also have some metal parts, wall plug, some more metal parts right here. Here is the LCD, some screws which are organized really well. Here is the power supply and here is the control board. Here are all of the stepper motors and here is the extruder. As you can see there is only one nozzle but two places for filament and that's because the filaments are mixed inside the hot end. So there is no need for sophisticated calibration of the two nozzles. First thing to do is to fix bearings to bed plate with M3 screws. Then attach small bearing to the front panel. That's the one with Zonestar. To the back panel mount big end stop. Fix metal holder to the motor and then to back panel. Add a pulley to the motor shaft. Find the long metal part with places for two Z axis motors and screw them down. Put pulleys on the motor shaft, but don't fix them yet. Now we can fix two sides parts of the printer that are labeled right and left. Screw them down with M3 screws next to the motors. Put back panel on the back of the printer and tighten the screws. Add a display to the top panel. To do so you have to take off the knob and then put it back in. Fix the panel to the top of the printer with 4 screws. Let's add two rails and mount front panel to them. Fix that with six screws. Carefully put rods in the bearings, do it slowly to avoid damaging them.
fix the rods to the frame with screws on the front and back. Bed should move freely. Build is going very well so far. The construction of this printer is really solid. I'm really curious how it will print. Now we can put a belt on the Y axis. Use zip tie to secure it. As you can see I mount the motor wrongly, I changed that so that the belt is straight. Try to tighten the belt as strongly as you can and then secure it on the other side with zip tie. Mount screws to the heated bed, put on them springs and mount to the Y axis. Mount the last end stop to the side of the frame, that's Z axis end stop. To mount it you need a small metal part. Find a big 3D printed part and fix to it motor, that's for the X axis. Then put a rod in the bearing of this element and put the rod into the frame on the left side. On the top of the rod you should place a small 3D printed part that will hold it in place. Fix that part with screws. Put in place a rod and fix shaft to it. That's how it should look like. Do the same for the other side. Let's put on the X axis carriage with hot end. Put two rods in the 3D printed element and slide it to the same element on the opposite side. To finish X axis we have to mount the belt. Make sure that it is properly tightened and secure it with zip ties.
power supply should be fixed to the right side of the printer. Remember to use plastic distances for that. On the other side put the control board, also use plastic distances to do so. Assemble the extruders. You just have to fix two parts to the second extruder. Fix both extruders to the top of the printer. There are two small filament holders that I add on the back of the printer. The last thing is to add a filament tube guides. Connection takes some time so I wouldn't cover that in this video. There is everything you should know in the instruction, so it is very simple to connect everything. Instruction is very clear so you wouldn't have any problems with that. That's how my printer looks like with all of the cables connected but without cable management. And here is how it should look like when all of the cables are managed. Try to do the same because it helps you a lot when you want to move your printer or just with printing. We can take off the foil from LCD and check if everything is working. Everything works fine for me, so I started to print a Benchy on it, but I faced some problems and failed to print it few times. Okay, so after a lot of tries I finally managed to get a nice print out of this printer. Because there were some problems. Main problem was that step sticks on the control board, those are the stepper drivers, the small components that control stepper motors, weren't adjusted properly. You can find on them a small potentiometer. And with this potentiometer you control how much current should flow through the stepper motor. They were completely unadjust and because of that my y-axis and z-axis loses steps while printing. And because of that I've got this beautiful half of the benchy. That's the normal benchy and that's half of the size benchy. I also failed like six times to print a benchy because of the y-axis. I finally managed to adjust the potentiometer properly Right now it's working without any problems. Actually this Benchy is printed on it. This is Benchy that I got from this printer without any extra settings. As you can see, retraction should be a little bit bigger. That's the calibration cube, its dimensions are perfect. Golden Benchy is printed on Zonestar and white one on the Creality CR10 Mini. White one is the best Benchy that I have right now. There were some problems with this printer at the beginning, because I had to adjust the stepper drivers, but except that it works nice. There are a lot of good things about this printer, but also a lot of bad ones. So the first thing, it has double extruder. That's really cool, I didn't test this function yet. I will definitely make another video of how to use this printer with double extruders. The LCD and knob works very well. That's a good thing. The assembly was very simple, everything fits perfectly, it was much better than with my GG Aurora 605 s Also bearings work much better than on GG Aurora. There is also menu on the printer and there are few things that I really like about this menu but there are also few that I really don't like. So let's start with the things that I like about this menu. There are a lot of options in the menu, seriously, you can find everything you want and that's really cool. Some of those options are not so useful, but for example, there is an option to check if you assembled everything properly. It checks if motors and end stops are working, that's really good. And there is one option that is super useful, I think, because you can set the bed coating. So if you have a tape on your bed, you can just put like 
0.50 millimeters and after each homing it will move those 0.15 millimeters up and that's very useful because you don't have to manually adjust the Z height. One thing that I really don't like about this many are animations because when you, whenever you click on something there are those animations that the screen is moving and all of the things. I really don't like it because it wastes time. You have to wait until the animation is done and also at the beginning for me I, I was thinking that something is not right with the LCD because it looks like something is just not working. What is my opinion about this printer so far? I would suggest you to buy a CR10 or any other popular 3D printer. They are much simpler to use and everything works almost out of the box. With this printer you have to make some adjustments. It's quite easy if you have experience to make it working really well but you need to do it, you need to make it, you need to adjust those things and it wouldn't work probably out of the box. But this printer costs $200. That's super cheap for a 3D printer and you have double extruder in it. So it is much cheaper than CR10. So if you need double extruder or you just want a DIY kit of the 3D printer but if you have no experience with 3D printing and you just want to start I would suggest you to buy a CR10 or CR10 mini because both of those printers are really good. So as for now, I'm not really sure what to think about this printer yet. I have to spend some more time with it. Expect a video about how to use it for double color printing. It will be ready soon. Don't forget to leave a like and comment and subscribe to my channel. If you have any idea on what I can print with the two colors, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, happy making!